you know, I came on, I haven't done an awful lot. I, I have, I mean, I've been working very hard in Ohio of, on the Green Party and, um, but I haven't been doing much on the national party level, but I'm trying to, to remain connected. And this is an important piece of where I would like to stay connected. So that's my little piece of why I'm here tonight. Cynthia, do you want to go next? All right. Yeah. Hi, Cynthia. Brian, Kate. I basically every November, uh, I've been involved with Transgender Day of Remembrance for the past 21 years now. It's I'm glad that I can help with all the issues. I'm glad that I can help on all this stuff. I'm sad that I'm even still needed on this, that we still have a world where discrimination, violence, murder against trans and gender diverse people still happens. I pray every August and every November for it to be half obsolete. I want still, and I keep saying it every time I do a presentation on this anywhere, I want to wake up and find out the haters and killers decided they'd rather play Pokemon and I get to sit around while somebody paints my nails and tell them how things were stupid back then. And that's 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 the goal that I continue working for, a world where people just get it, where people get to express and live their gender as they are, free from threat, free from violence, free from murder, free from getting their rights taken away by ignorant jerks. And actually... This morning, I'll say one thing about my morning, because as a transgender woman with an intersex body, I've been trying to get various things of getting gender affirming medical care for myself, what some people would call transition help. I will definitely call it gender affirming, because when your body's in between, it's a question of whether getting anything done with hormonal, surgical, other things has anything to do with going from one gender to another. Uh, I my, I have a body that's in between. I have a gender identity that's way more on the woman's side. And this morning, I spent a very productive, if intense, morning actually in conversation with a gender-affirming doctor who themselves has actually moved to my part of the country to pretty much escape the oppression of a certain state in the in these 50, one of too many, unfortunately, where giving medical care of any kind that affirms the gender, certainly of youth, because the haters are targeting our youth, but even some services for adults are under threat from ignorant, outdated hater politicians and related people. The thing is, the average person that I encountered, people in general are more up on this stuff, more informed, more compassionate, more willing to, at worst, tell me, I don't understand this stuff I'd like to hear about it. At best, tell me, oh yeah, I think this that for folks like you are awesome. It's just we still have a political system in this country and politicians and messed up laws and bills that are back in the past. The haters know their world is ending and they want to try taking us with them. And the work I do is to make it clear that we're not playing that. We're making a better world where people get to live free and safe. Uh, and that's pretty much what I like to think the Green Party is dedicated to, which is why I joined in 2009. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, Margaret Elizabeth, do you want to go next? Um, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for first off. So thank you for doing this webinar again. I know we're going to probably do that like more officially later. But um, so most of you all know me, right? Um, I'm on the SC, um, an LGC co-chair and chair of my state party, which is a lot of different hats to wear. And sometimes they're slightly competing. But um, I think one of the reasons I so I'm a non-binary trans femme, which might confuse some people initially, but just go with it, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, so 
one of the things that I want to do, right? So like, I guess there's a lot of reasons we all come personally speaking, but like, what do I hope to accomplish with this? So I hope to accomplish a couple of things. And I state it pretty clearly a lot, which is that the Green Party is the only national electoral party which has trans rights and gender non-conforming rights in our platform. It's really explicit. And we as a party are really proactive, right? We're not reactive to these things. We proact to them, right? We're, we're ahead of it. So as, as, a, you know, as I mentioned my own identity um, intersection here, it's important for me then to demonstrate to potential new greens who are trans or genderqueer, whatever, that this party actually lives up to its values, that the things we say aren't just lip service. We're not just trying to get people in the door. We want you in here. And if you come, you can participate. You can be a respected member of the party and even go and rise up to the leadership positions and, and have influence on what's going on. A lot of organizations we participate in as trans people very much want our effort, but do not ever include us once they succeed. Then we're just kicked out the door. So this is not that place. The Green Party is a place for queer folks to organize and be successful in doing so and have good representation. And I think that just broadly speaking, you know, like I grew up in a different country. Nevertheless, when I got here, there still weren't examples for me to look at in any place in life and say, oh, this is somebody that I could aspire to be like. I know right now that there are a ton of trans and gender nonconforming kids all over the United States right now who are looking for role models and examples. And I'm a terrible one of those at least, but that doesn't mean they don't look at us and see us in these positions and say to themselves, look at that person. They did it. I can do it too. And like Cynthia was saying, you know, I want a world where all these trans and gender nonconforming youth have that sense of, I can do it too. I can have that too. I can have a normal life. I mean, I don't like that word, but you know what I mean, right? A, a typical life, not full of, you know, ultra violence and, you know, outright misogyny and hatred. We don't live in that society, right? This is an optimistic goal. It's what we're working towards, but we have to have the vision to work towards it. Otherwise, we just go in our circle. So that's why I'm here. I like to do that. Of course, I like, want to support my colleagues. And on a you know personal note, you know I'll say that um, this year I've lost four trans friends, um, you know, two on their own and two by other people. So that hits me every year, right? Every year, the amount of people I personally know shrinks because of violence against my community, and you know it hurts, you know, like my heart. <laughs> and it hurts all of our souls when it happens. It does. We as a society lose when our society enacts, uh, you know, gendered hatred and racial hatred on minorities. We just all do. And there's no way around it. So I think it's just that um, I talk a bunch too. So I <laughs> I'm a loquacious. You know, that's a part of me on that one. Um, but I really feel passionately about these projects. I'm really so grateful that it's not just the NLGC, which takes up our cause. Right. I mean, that's obviously the mission of the NLGC, but that it's broadly supported in the Green Party, state parties, other caucuses and other committees hold recognition for trans folks in our party. And, you know, part of my um, French here, I don't even know where that phrase came from, but part of my French, but that shit is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Would you like to go next? Jackie, are you there? Yeah. I'm finding all my buttons to turn my spring myself back on here. Oh. I'm sorry. And what and and what am I what was it, I'm sorry. Introduce yourself and uh, why is this topic so important to you? Oh, okay. So I'm Jackie Devenel and I am with the main party, the main green party. And this is a very important um, subject to me, um, some of my closest friends are transgender, and a lot of my friends are of the LGBTQ plus um, community, and it's wonderful. I, I love what Margaret has spoken here um, because it's important. Um, one of the things. Oh, shoot. Somebody has to call in the middle of my... Sorry about that. 
<laughs> um, one of the most important things uh, right now for me is bringing as many youth as we can into the party and going to the colleges. And we have always in the past tried to start youth caucuses, but now I'm pushing to start LGBTQ, um, excuse me, lavender caucuses, uh, youth caucuses in the colleges because there's so many youth that identify that way that I think it would be good for them to have their own groups within the college and have that. So yeah, that is, I guess that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Chanel, can you go next? Sure, I would love to. Um... I'm Chanel Pittman. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And basically, this is important to me because I have the the fortune to have two transgender nephews, one in Georgia, one in Arizona. And we almost lost my older nephew around the time that he came out because of the turmoil that comes with having to come out when you're not quite sure you have a supportive family like my nephew is trans and autistic and those two things like clashed with each other around the time my nephew came out and he needed to be committed for a little bit but he came out of that hospital and he told the family what we needed to hear gave us his name and all I can think about is wanting to make a world where my nephew is safe to pursue his goals and dreams and never has to feel like, never has to feel like he's not supposed to be here. My nephews are some of the strongest people I know. And every day I just worry that because the pressure that they're in in states like Arizona and Georgia, if I'm gonna lose them, I don't want them to be on this list. So yeah. I have to do, what is ever possible for me to create a world where they can be safe. And the only way I see that happening is if we enact green policy and get people with a full understanding and a full living of this platform and these values to elected office to create the laws that will keep my nephew safe. Yeah. Thank you, Chanel. And you're also part of the uh, um, the youth party, correct? Uh, the youth um, caucus? Yes, um, I just finished a term as our essentially secretary, our accreditation co-chair. Um, I'm not on the steering committee anymore, but I can get you to wherever you need to go youth caucus wise, because I keep track of all that information anyway. So we might need to link up after the call, Jackie. <laughs> Belinda, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, uh, first of all, what she said, what Chanel said, yes, everything. And um, I, uh, my pronouns, or she, or she, or they, both are fine with me. Um, I am the chair of the Green Party of Philadelphia and also a member of the Diversity Committee. And um, I'm uh, all too aware, not only from everything else one sees, but also from the website I know of from Cynthia um, that um, that speaks to the horrible violence um, that trans people are unceasingly subjected to, um, which makes me nuts and makes me really want our party to lead the way in changing that. Although sometimes that's hard at the local level, I still I have a uh, a fellow uh, uh, a fellow Green Party of Philadelphia person who still cannot understand that one of our um, uh, this this person uses a different pronoun every day um, to refer to one of our uh, our trans members. Um, but also just to mention, as an historian, um, I and someone who studies how change works and how time is lumpy and how things can look like they're not changing and not changing and not changing. And then all of a sudden, all the work people have been putting in for a long time can really 
accelerate quickly. And it seems, and, and I think all the time about the example of um, the awareness of and understanding of gender fluidity that's increasingly mainstream um, that makes me, uh, it, it, it really gives me hope and really makes me hope that the Greens can uh, be part of, you know, going in the right direction with that over. Alex Casper, would you like to introduce yourself next and uh, say why um, this is so important to you? Hi, everybody. My name's Alex Casper. I'm from the Green Party of Philadelphia. I'm member secretary what? there. I'm also um, inspector of elections of Philadelphia until 2025 and Ward 47, Division 14. I also am on the Reimagined Philadelphia Steering Committee, and uh, I help uh, connect people to public housing and other welfare benefits is like my day job in the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services and <laughs> on my own supporting a support group for public housing. And so um, I use they, them pronouns. And I'm here because um, like many of you, I have lost people close to me who are transgender. And um, I am tired of hearing all of the headlines of people murdered or taking their own lives because of the social climate of our country. Um, I have a friend, Taya, who took their own life last year, and <sighs> it still impacts me, and it still is tragic to me that, um, like, that I've lost, like, my closest friends in my life to suicide, and so um, I'm here to mourn and listen to along with all of you and I am very thankful to spend this time with all of you today um, for this sh shared goal of creating a more peaceful and equitable and safe society inclusive society thank you thanks well um and Richard Gomez would you like to go next Where we go? Okay. Oh, we got it. Okay. If everybody can, what is it now? Allow Zoom to take pictures. Yeah, okay. Uh, anything else they want? Hey, everybody. My name is Richard Gomez from Fresno, California. Unfortunately, Fresno is also one of those many places that are not too crazy about people uh, of all kinds. Um, I'm a supporter, but a long time supporter for a long time. And um, this idea of challenging people because of concepts that just simply no longer exist, where reality has exploded their, you know, their meaning. Because people are people. And I'm here to support all kinds of people. And also I wanted to hear more. Like I said, we do have people who unfortunately are killed and commit suicide themselves because they can't handle it. I know it's difficult because I'm living in Fresno too, but um, Fresno has to change. Like everywhere else, we have to change. Just simply let people be people. Thank you. Who's next? I think that's me. I'm Dawn Marie, and I am up in Michigan. I've had a lot of friends who are in the Lavender Caucus. That's actually how I ended up joining the Green Party. But I've been I've been involved in teaching art and jewelry most of my life, which means I've been able to see that everybody has this amazing ability to be who they are regardless of who their gender are and it doesn't need to define us the part we are who we are regardless of what bathroom we need to use and what our body parts are um 
this is a day that we are trying to help educate and remember those that we have lost and see what we can do to help prevent those losses in the future. And so we're officially starting our discussion period. We're going to go around and talk about the different um, aspects, education, intervention, when we see inappropriate things happening in our community and what we can do in the political world. The political part is the most important. So we're going to start with that first. Because we'll give background, uh, the website that Belinda mentioned and what TDOR is in case anyone isn't as familiar, to, even though it seems like everybody here kind of is. Absolutely, Cynthia. I was just going to turn it back on over to you. Thank you. Okay, first of all, the website Belinda is mentioning is tdor.translivesmatter.info. <clears throat> TDOR stands for Transgender Day of Remembrance, which was started in 1999 by transgender activist and reporter Gwendolyn Smith. <clears throat> if, if one person I got to meet a couple times when she came to Michigan. <clears throat> and the event was created originally in the Bay Area, in 1999 to bring attention to awareness of and try to get some redress for the murders of two trans women, one of which was on November 20th of one of the years in question, which is actually why the official date for TDOR is November 20th. And Don Marie and I are being joined by a friend of ours on a panel for Green Party of Suffolk, which is the local I'm a vice chair of. The whole point of TDOR is to raise awareness, education, to try to help make things better, uh, both by people being aware of this and people making it clear that this kind of discrimination, violence, and murder are unacceptable and that people should get a right to express and live the lives their lives without being punished, hurt, or killed for their gender. As for why the heck I got involved, besides what I already said, uh, in my day, when I was growing up, when I was a youth, we didn't have much in the way of awareness in my school district, in my town. I come from a very tiny town in suburban Long Island, where essentially, nobody was talking about this. I thought I was the only one. Uh, after I came out, I, let's see, I've pretty much managed to narrowly avoid death by both murder and suicide, which sadly are too often realities for trans and gender diverse people. We have haters who try to kill us with their hands, and we have haters, including, unfortunately, certain politicians who want to drive us to do it by our own. And that's the kind of badness that that we're here tonight to address, that we need a world where, where a day like today, it should be a history thing. It shouldn't even be in the first damn place. It shouldn't be that all these people go on the website I mentioned and you can read the lists of murders, suicides, and things where say people were de uh, deprived of medical care that led to their death because of hatred of their gender. None of these deaths should have happened. None of these deaths are natural. These deaths should not still be happening. People should not be discriminated against. People should not be forced to live in any kind of gender expression other than the one that actually is what they feel uh, you know, belongs to them. People should be able to be themselves. Like I said, people are people. Well, we need a world where people get to be people without somebody trying to bully, hurt, or kill them. That's why the heck we're here tonight. Don Murray, did I do an okay job of giving what the heck TDOR is? Yes, thank you. So, in the political... Anita, right. can, can I Anita? jump in? I, I, I thought there was somebody else on um, the call who, who doesn't appear to be there anymore, but I saw another name showing up on my screen. That was Lisa Kunar, and um, now I don't see that name at all, but um, did we skip that person? I don't see Lisa either, actually. Lisa was on until 
we got started, but I think we skipped her in introductions. And I just, I don't know who Lisa is, but I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose somebody. Over. Margaret Sack. I know this isn't just acting, but Lisa's from my state party. She's our treasurer. So I'll message her and let her know she can come back if she, if she thought she had to leave or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think let's just ask the question and see who wants to, uh, to talk about it first. What can we do in the political realm to um, help make things easier for us to protect the trans people and prevent this from, uh, to make this list shorter and shorter each year? Announce that. Margaret Sack. Oh, go ahead, Margaret. Oh, no, you, you first, Chanel. I want to hear your ideas. Well, one of the things that we can do as a political party is to pay attention to the types of types of laws that are getting passed in our states and on the federal level. Like, for instance, right now, we should be along with the Fight for Future Coalition trying to do something to make sure that COSA, the Kids Online Safety Act, is not passed through the Senate by a voice vote this week. Because the Kids Online Safety Act, despite its name, would give attorney generals, whom we know have been historically anti-LGBTQ, the right to remove things from the internet that they feel are danger to children. But this is a bill written by the Heritage Foundation, oh. and we know how the Heritage Foundation feels about anybody that's not a straight, cis, white, Christian male. Yeah. We as a party can come out in opposition to things like COSA and the Earn It Act, and that, and working against bills like that is some way that we can help people understand that they can come here with their activism because we're here protecting free speech and protecting the rights of the collective internet as a whole vehicle for information and trade. Over. Thank you, Chanel. Margaret Elizabeth? Well, there's a couple of things, right? Um, and I think that it really, so what we can do is pressure the existing uh, political leaders, right? That's, that's the actual thing. So what would we pressure them to do? I think there's a lot of things that can be done, but like one of the really straightforward things is to ensure that trans and gender nonconforming people are included in the Equality Act which I'll, yeah. you know, mention like with, with the Equal Rights Act, for instance, it's still not ratified. So, you know, there's that. But if we're included in those things, that's really important. That enshrines our rights in the Constitution. And that gives us the legal standing to, you know, be legal entities in the, in the country. And despite my reticence to sort of, um, let's say, adopt the language of the colonizers here, that's the nature of the situation we live in. And if we want to like change this system, we, we have to be really clear-eyed about some of the things and challenges we have, right? We If we look around at this election, this last one that just concluded in uh, November 7th, um, what we see is overwhelmingly places where trans rights and abortion care were on the ballot. Um, abortion won and trans people won, right? The people who were opposed to us lost. This is really like encouraging to me because you know, if you're if you're in the general social media zeitgeist, you you can hear a really outsized cry from people who are against, you know, abortion and trans folks. But they actually represent a very small group of people in in our whole total. So it can be easy for us to be discouraged sometimes because of that. So I think it's two things, right? Um, we need to get ourselves into enshrined into the Constitution, the Equal Rights Amendment, and we need to make sure that we don't become discouraged in this process. As I mentioned, the uh, it's still not ratified, right? So the people who the Equal Rights Amendment was originally designed for, well, ostensibly cis women, right? But um, the, it's still, and this is in, what, 1976? So that's many years ago, almost 50 years, and it's still not ratified. So even if we had our like trans people and gender nonconforming people in that, 
it still isn't ratified. So it's a, it's not just get it in there. It's then get that ratified. So as you were mentioning, Chanel, it's paying attention to state laws, which are being enacted. It's the states who have to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. That's who does it. And once enough states do it, then we can have it. Um, and so I think that as on a local level, that's a good place that we can pressure. Our local politicians are far more responsive to us than like national level ones, right? Uh, and so talk to your city council person, pressure them, talk to your mayor. Uh, those folks have like lines of communication into the other government people. And if enough people are pushing from the bottom, the top changes. We've seen it in our country, A, with, with gay marriage, right? So that first came about and obviously the stupid SCOTUS decision. So how that's going to play out is the thing. But, you know, we're we're in a fight for our uh, I don't want to be too dramatic here, but, you know, a fight for our lives. And we have to use everything at our disposal to win, uh, to prevail over our opponents because they will. They're not going to hold back. Right. They're going to do everything. And so we have to use all of our means to Margaret over. Thank What's you, Margaret that? Elizabeth. That's that? uh, Alex is Alex Casper is on stack. And then who did I just hear? Uh, me, Cynthia, I had a question. I had a sort of question about Margaret's thing just now. So I don't want to jump over people. Okay, direct response real quick. Yeah, I thought that trans people were and still are included in equality in the Equality Act, even though I know certain extremist groups that I've tangled with in person would like us taken out of it. I hope that we are still included in the Equality Act, assuming we can hopefully get that to pass. Yes, we are included in the Equality Act, but we are not in the Equal Rights Amendment. Ah. Thanks for clearing that up. No Over. Alex? Hey, so um, responding to what Margaret said about um, how we need to use ballot measures, I agree ballot measures are very powerful tools right now. We just got an office for people with disabilities packed in Philadelphia with a ballot measure. And so I think um, rallying people based around their identity to support themselves on the ballot measure is encouraging has been productive lately as we're seeing with abortion rights as we're seeing with lgbtq rights as we are seeing with disability rights and supports and so i think that is absolutely the way to go the way you got to do it you got to get your focus group to support those ballot measures take petitions and then um canvas those petitions drop four or five thousand signatures on the floor of your local council or um or state um state house and show like hey we have all these people supporting this measure we need to be able to vote for our rights and try to get a ballot measure passed if you can get a meeting with the with the legislator or with a council member with all those signatures um you can really make a lot of movement to potentially get them to support a measure being voted if your state allows ballot measures on your the to be used in the pass uh pass a movement and so that is the way to go find your local support group or fo focus groups and go out and canvas get some signatures and that's how you'll grow both your party and your movement um canvassing is the most productive way to do it and getting those signatures is the first step to um anything with this thank you alex is there anyone else who wants to uh, to talk on this subject? I'd like to know what can yeah. be protect yes. young people because unfortunately the haters, particularly the politicians who are haters, they're targeting our young people. <clears throat> they are taking away the rights of trans and gender non-conforming people in elementary junior high high school uh pretty much to come out to express their gender to seek any kind of gender affirming care be it medical or otherwise and unfortunately the hideous doctrine of 
we've adopted the states is being used to make it where some states people still have rights to this, like in my state of New York, but there are so many other states where they're just trying to take this away. We really uh, need to have something in place so that, you know, don't have states where people are being driven to suicide bef before they graduate high school simply because their state is a place where they don't have rights. Thank you, Cynthia. And Alex? Um, so there are several different things that need to be done and we can spend probably an hour talking about like every single measure we need to take to protect everybody. But the first thing like we all need to address is that there's not enough queer people who are running for office and not enough trans people are running for office and not enough parents of queer kids and trans kids who are running for office and school board. And so if you have if, you, if you're a parent and you have kids who are impacted by this, you should be thinking about running for school board if you have elected school board in your town. If you are a young person and you're impacted by these laws or a queer person in general is impacted by these laws, run for office because nobody's going to speak up on this issue except for you. And so even if you don't win office, just running for office gets that conversation going in your community and makes people have it. And you'll win and you'll make progress by having that dialogue. And if, if you're not ready to run for office, like I said earlier, collect petitions on those specific issues that you know will immediately change things in your town because each one of our towns are in a different place. I'm in Philadelphia and Philadelphia and Pennsylvania are talking about being um, sanctuaries where other towns don't have access to treatment and are not in the same place that people in Philadelphia are. And, you know, places like Philadelphia, we should be talking about how we can better become better sanctuaries for people who need another place to go. We need to talk about how we make housing more accessible and how we make um, um, treatment more accessible and easier to and more affordable. And where you are locally, you need to figure out what it is in your town that would protect people and make things easier immediately and petition for that because those petitions and those seats in office are the only things that can really do anything to change anything. Um, thank you. Thanks. Excellent point. Um, with us having to bring a awareness into our own communities and um, the teaching and awareness, that's the next part of what we're going to discuss. What ideas and um, ways can we actually make a difference in our in our local areas having conversations is most important being active in our communities is another um who would like to talk on this subject margaret sack margaret just as an aside, I want to talk on all the subjects. So there's that. But um, so, yeah. OK, so local level, uh, Alex kind of touched on some of what I would say here. So as I recently, as many of you know, I just recently ran for Seattle City Council. Uh, in that process, I had a chance to meet then right through my through my treasurer who was helping me. She's been here for a long time. So she connected me to, for instance, somebody running for school board who has a trans kid who is specifically advocating for trans rights here in King County, which I know it might seem like Seattle is a really progressive place. And it typically is. But that doesn't mean we don't have you know that same challenge from like conservative parents trying to take out gender, you know, race and all the rest of our, of our curriculum. So, you know, I was really happy to support that campaign. So I would say this, right, if you're not able to run, and there's a lot of us who, you know, we're not able to because we don't have the, the thick skin for it, because running for political office is not, you know, like friendly. Your, your friends are friendly to you, but the opponents aren't. So like a lot of us are already like on the, you know, spoon level of using all of our spoons. So maybe you don't want the kind of person who's going to run. So what do you do? Find other candidates in these races who support your issues and then volunteer and help them, right? That that's what they need. I, I tell you right now, I, I had the green uh, stream here with our election candidates, right? On November 7th to a person. 
the number one thing that impacted their campaigns was directly talking to people, you know, knocking on the door and talking to them. That helps us too. So when we have candidates who support our issues like trans rights, you know, gender care, whatever it might be, it's incumbent upon us if we can't like be that person to advance the cause to help them. Like right? mm-hmm. that is obviously going to help us too. So I think when we are looking at our, when I look at my community, I'm sort of extrapolating. I see like three areas that I can directly like volunteer time to make a difference. Uh, putting my time in at a food kitchen, feeding people. As a trans person doing that, I'm then also making that space welcoming for other trans people to be there. They see me there, they know they could come there and maybe they don't feel comfortable talking to anyone else, but they would be feel, feel comfortable talking to me and then they're going to be able to get food and be helped. The other thing you can do is volunteer your time for, as I mentioned, a political candidate who's running for office, There'll be a lot of that coming up in the next year. So look for that. And the other thing you can do, and I think this one's maybe a little bit, um, you know, under the radar a bit. So community service, right? Obviously feeding folks is great, but there's another thing that we can do that kind of really dovetails into our greenness and, and engages people in a different way. So um, have an actual task, a chore, a job, a thing you want to accomplish, i.e. here in Washington, we made a goal of planting 365 trees in one year. Measurable goal, right? So, and we can get people off the couch for a day on the weekend to come out and help us dig some holes. And if they do that with us, then the next time we ask, they might be willing to do it again. That helps our community. It helps us engage with new prospective members and shows them that we're actually doing something. No, no, but y'all, but I get email after email to my state party asking me, I'd like to join. What can I do? And my response is, would you like to come to a planning meeting? No, they would not. <laughs> they do not want, they want to do something. And, you know, give a, a tangible task, planting trees, cleaning up a park, recycling some junk. Like one of the things I did after my, after the Howie Hawkins campaign was, um, right, this is at the start of COVID. So um, they had closed down our recycling centers here in Seattle. So I and a friend, another Green Party member, uh, volunteered to have a collection site for all the political signs in people's yards. And they brought them to this big park and dumped them, you know, at us. We had a truck, a U-Haul truck rented. We tossed them all in that and we drove uh, out of state to a recycling place that was, you know, still working and and had it all recycled. But that kind of stuff, right? People, it's green. They see green people doing green things. These things connect together well. Then when we come to them and say, hey, we have these social issues we want you to support, they're on board with us already. They know we're putting work in the community, we're engaged, and we're committed to bettering it. We're not just putting lip service in and saying, hey, I want you to fix this problem. We're going to fix it too. All right, Margaret, over. Does anyone else uh, want to speak on this? Uh... Well, actually, yeah, for just a couple of seconds, I guess. Education, I've been doing uh, one-on-one stuff on gender topics pretty much for almost the entire time I've been out as both a trans woman and an intersex chimera. I will, as Don Marie and Chanel and Margaret definitely know, I will talk about all this stuff any place that won't shut my butt out the door. And I've even done it for a few places that tried. Uh, I, I've On last month's panel, I talked about uh, the surprise of being able to get one of the most right-wing churches in Michigan to actually dialogue on this and change some mind. I, I cannot overemphasize the importance for those of us who are... Uh, you know, who do have the spoons to be able to talk about this stuff in conversations, public speaking, community discussions about all of these issues and topics and such. Uh, it definitely does a lot. And oh, in terms of what Margaret said about people having a job, I, when it comes to Trans Day of Remembrance, if you just look at this just from the side of all the horrible bad stuff, all the violence and murder, which we should be addressing, the problem is, if you just look at it that way, if I I would never run an event where I just tell people, hey, all sucks, it's all depressing, that's it, because nobody wants to 
don't have that. I certainly don't. And people hear that, they're not going to come back. So one of my shamans told me about a decade ago, if you're ever going to give a TDOR event, give the people a job, which we're talking about right now. Raven Caldera told me in these exact words, give them a job, anything. If it's run for office, fine. If it's challenge an unjust law or get a better law passed, fine. If it's run for school board or do public speaking, fine. If it's telling your Aunt Susie to shut up when she makes a transphobic joke at Thanksgiving, that's also part of it. I think that he's given some very important words about this, and I think what we're doing tonight is part of that job. Over. That's true, Cynthia. It is part of our job. It's important for us to talk out about this and to to educate, to help people understand that we are all able to share this world. Um, does anyone else have anything that they would like to talk about tonight? Margaret Stack. Belinda Stack after. Or you should go, Belinda. I've I've had a, a fair bit of talking. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of direct response anyway, uh, and very quick. I just wanted to say that um, I'm uh, I'm in complete agreement. Well, with what everybody has said, but also specifically with what Cynthia was just saying about giving everyone a job, and that was uh, what I was trying to emphasize too. And I was mentioning you know, kind of taking taking stock of what has happened so we don't just all get too depressed to do anything. And I love this idea of giving everyone a job. Everyone has, an, a, 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 in effect, an action item to leave with to actually make the change. So uh, I'm not saying anything new. I just wanted to really uh, support, support that. Over. Okay. Um, okay, so this one is a little bit, I guess, like it's, if you're a trans person, the chances are you are underemployed and underpaid um, by a lot. So most trans people I know are in really difficult financial situations. And this is the case for many people, but specifically my community. And you know, if you are a black trans woman, it's even worse. If you're a person of color in America, as you know, it's already worse for you in every context. And being trans does not make that better. So, you know, I think what we could do, um, like, you know, us, maybe not so much, but collectively as a group, using our political means as party people and all the rest. So here in Seattle, we have a $15 an hour minimum wage. I mean, minimum wages are super useful and good things for working class and poor folks. So one of the biggest things we can do is increasing the minimum wage in our cities so that the trans and gender nonconforming people who do have jobs there can get paid somewhat close to a, la a wage which they can actually live in the city, let alone the health care. And I think that if I if I could you know break it down, there isn't like, which one is better? Do I need money or do I need health care? We clearly need both. Health care is a right. We have a right to health care. And, you know, we don't necessarily have the right to a job. But this is where the uh, UBI comes in, right? Uh, we need a universal basic income for every person in the United States. Uh, and that is the game changer for every single working class person. You no longer have to work a job you hate for a company that you can't stand to listening to people who are idiots telling you what to do. Your insurance is disconnected from your job. You can pursue your own things that make you happy. If you want to do those other jobs, you can too. But I think there's like a groundswell of progressive politics all around the country, UBI, <laughs> minimum basic wage, guaranteed housing, and healthcare. Those four big issues all intersect our community as trans folks so much that they're hardly even separable in a real way. And yet, if we talk to people outside of the party about those issues, they'll support them, right? They will be on board with that. And we connect it up with our own struggles. People see then very clearly how that is effort which will directly benefit us and them. And I think when we can get to the and them part, there's far more people likely to help us and participate in the effort. I can, I can share, you know, as, as many of you know, the disastrous um, Human Rights Commission back in 2011, 
right, had a vast trans volunteer staff working on all that stuff that Obama was going to do specifically to enshrine trans protections in federal law so the federal government couldn't discriminate against this. That got removed, of course, uh, at the last minute. And the result of that was that the trans people at HRC walked out on mass. And we've never been in a position where we're going to be exploited by those groups again. If you won't do it with us, we'll do it on our own. But I think that realistically, if we want to make quicker progress, we need to be in the and them kind of category, right? So you help us and them, you help us and you. Uh, and I think that in those scenarios, we always find people more willing to support us, give money to our causes and actually advocate for us. It's one thing for you know somebody to attend this meeting it's completely different when there's no trans people around and someone stands up for us and defends us and advocates for our rights when there's no like um, performance pressure to do it right and i think that that is the kind of change that once we start seeing it more places the, the groundswell will be so much they won't be able to stop it and we'll just have this sort of cascade effect um but, you know, I think we've all touched on a few subjects here, specifically one about like burnout, you know, getting very, very uh, challenged in our advocacy for whatever it might be, especially if you're a trans person. Uh, and in the political world, right, the constant pushback and the, 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 the litany of you can never win because you're independent, you can't do this, you're, like that saps our strength. So these kind of groups, right, so are really regenerative for me. So if you can't do any of those other things, start a trans support group where you are and invite those people to come and connect and find community. You know, I, it's hard any city we live in, but roughly speaking, there's one trans person in every hundred thousand people, give or take. So if you live in a town or a city with a hundred thousand people, there's one trans person there. You know, that's super lonely feeling. So create a, you know, a coffee group or a meetup and just invite them to come and they will. And it's that kind of stuff, right, which really makes a big difference in people's lives. We, we all know why TDOR is here. And we've all known people who have felt so desperate that they've taken their own life. And one of the ways that we can help alleviate that desperation is by helping people find connection, right? People uh, like them that they can talk to and find peer support and guidance and even mentorship. I know when I came out, I would have loved to have somebody who was further along in the process who I could have asked all my questions to like, Hey, this is happening. Is it normal? What should I, should I be worried? All that stuff, right? All that anxiety that you have. And so, so there's that. If you live in a smaller town, consider that kind of thing. Community activism goes so far for us, especially, you know, in the narrative that greens never do anything in the community. Um, Margaret, over. Thank you, Zach. Just one minute, Cynthia. Alex, you're first. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go off of what uh, Margaret was saying. I agree that um, by being inclusive and by empowering trans people and other disenfranchised people to be voices in the Green Party and be in the community and speak out on these issues, giving them a role, people are going to speak up and um we're going to make a lot more power within our movement and support our movement better anybody who's coming to our party um regardless of like the reason they're coming to our party they're most likely coming to our party because they felt like they haven't been heard somewhere else because there are two very powerful political parties in our country that are not listening to every single one of us and you know they're coming to us then they're probably looking for a role because why else do you go directly to the party itself if you're not looking for something more? And so every single person who comes to us, we should be asking, what role do you want to do? Or like, how do I get you involved? Or like, come out to our event. Like those types of things, being inclusive is, is really important. Giving people a role to speak out and support this, be a voice on this is going to make a lot of progress, I think. Because we don't have roles. We don't have voices. It is 67 cents on a dollar to uh, for what a trans person earns compared to everybody else. And so that's significant. There are barriers to employment. There are barriers. Like if you come to Philadelphia, there are neighborhoods where there are tons of trans people and there are neighborhoods where you won't find any trans people because housing access is divided up based off of 
who you know and who is willing to sell you a home and or rent to you your rent to you their home. And so things like these are dividing and impacting us in every single way economically. And the only way that we can really build ourselves up is by creating environments, creating spaces, because not enough people are creating spaces for us. Um, everybody's looking for a third place the, that they can feel included, a community. And we have that role as organizers to create that community, create that third place in our party. And so not just being like come to our party meeting, but creating a spent events in the community for for each other. That's how we're gonna grow our movement. So yeah, thank you, Margaret. Yeah. Thank you. Cynthia, you're next. Yeah, I had a couple of things to say firstly about inclusion people power as things that we have as a part. As I, as y'all know, I live in New York. I currently live on at the moment. At least. And I can say that the fight for gender in my state proves this. Quick history for people who don't know. 2002, it was another case of trans people who were getting drafted out of non-discrimination. Drummer, like, you mute and we had, for a minute, please? What? There's a bass drum or something coming through. A lot of music. Isn't me. Weird. Um, it's gone now. It only seems to be coming from Don Marie's um, account. So I'm not sure what it is. Oh, how strange. I don't have any more music on. It must be road noise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, basically, after we, after my state had a the total nightmare like what Margaret was describing where trans people got cut out of all the non-discrimination legislation uh, people were saying oh why don't this party or that party out of the two mainstream ones fix this unfortunately in my state the Democrats and Republicans did everything they could to try holding trans rights back forever gender is the gender expression non-discrimination act we got it passed finally in 2019 and I really don't think we would have gotten the damn thing passed if not for the Green Party, because the Democrats were caucusing with the Republicans. It was called the Independent Democratic Caucus. Yeah, they were independent by pretty much being dinos with the rhinos. It was it was crazy. And I can say that the Green Party, particularly Green Party of Suffolk, we were among some of the most vocal groups getting the most people interested in involved to demand that this legislation that was being held back finally get to the floor and be voted and passed. Now, I can say this about my local Green Party of Suffolk. Our vice chairs are me, a trans woman with an intersex body, and a lady who identifies somewhere on the gender nonconforming spectrum uh, in some very interesting let's see, femme gender non-conforming ways. And we were, among, we were among the groups that did a lot to make it so that this would actually get passed. As of around this time in 2019, we finally had it passed where gender identity and expression are protected categories throughout New York State, regardless of what town you live in, what county, no more patchwork quilt. I really think that it's thanks to us Greens that we got this finally to where it should be and I think that should be a model for everywhere over Anita Stack Anita um, so I don't have any suggestions to add but I just wanted to to let you all know how much I appreciate this discussion um, I'm in Ohio, and Ohio right now is so, it is completely controlled by a supermajority of very conservative Republicans. I mean, if you know who Jim Jordan is, I mean, he, he just fits, he's from here. And um, it's, it's hard to not be discouraged looking at, um, some of the possibilities the the county i live in is heavily democrat and it's 
um, it's a bit more progressive, but at the same time, you know, it's one of those situations where everybody's just a Democrat, even the Republicans. And um, it, it's very frustrating. And it's, you know, I appreciate the energy and I, and I share this because um, this is helpful to me. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that um, this is a, a piece of, of planting new ideas for me, giving me new energy, helping me not to give up because it feels sometimes hopeless. Um, you know, here in Ohio, we just passed issue one, which was enshrining abortion rights in our constitution. But we have a state legislature that is now saying that they will remove um, uh, the judiciary from all uh, legal matters regarding abortion so that the, that none of the laws which currently restrict abortion can be changed without the state legislature. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? It is crazy. But those, those are those, you know, it, it feels like there are, you know, being trans in this state it is just a hard place to be. And so I appreciate your suggestions. Um, I know we, we can't give up because there are people's lives literally at stake for what we do and how we can push forward. And um, so I, I feel like um, coming out of this, there, there's some suggestions that you all have made that make a lot of sense. And I think, although, you know, like I said, we have a super majority of, of really um, negative people in our state house, and they're going to do some really crazy shit. And um, they will be obstacles. But, you know, some of your suggestions, okay, there are probably some, some people here on the local level you know, if nothing else, we can at least make make pockets of sanctuary. We can at least make um, some places where things are a little bit easier or a little bit better to push towards a time when we can demand more. But, you know, I, I think not losing sight of the ability to do something is really important right now in places like Ohio. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Anita. That was a good. That was a good statement. Yeah. You know, I I will I'll just say this to you. I you know I live in a weird state because it's there's like a mountain range in the middle of it and if you live on one side of the mountains you're like super conservative if you're on the other side you're pretty liberal um but you know it's like the liberals don't understand that they don't actually advance usually good policies for everyone else right they are because they're caught up in their liberal bubble here at least in washington we've been voting blue you know for a long time now so there's this like presumption I think amongst many of the electorate that the Dems are always going to win yet I can tell you right like I was out to gather signatures for Howie's campaign and I encountered tons of people who even though my state like it's not even close like millions of votes go the Democrat way so there would be no way like the whoever 100,000 people voting you know green here could change anything nevertheless you know, I'm sure you've all seen it, too, if you've done the signatures, people yelling at you, you're going to elect Trump or whomever the thing. Right. And I think that, like, I understand their concerns, like that they feel that fear. That's a genuine thing they're expressing. I think they're wrong. And I think it they their perspective is shaped, obviously, by their experience and their in my, if I may make a meta commentary here. So I didn't grow up in the United States and the entire time I've been here, politics is just like sports here. You, know, you win or you lose, right? Do you want to be on the winning team rather than understanding that we're voting for laws that govern us? It feels very much like politics is just a sporting event now. And so people get really caught up in the winning and my team's got to win. Well, you know, I, we're all green, so I don't need to, to give you the green pitch, but 
I think that here, and, and maybe this is the case for some of y'all, um, I stopped uh, pitching them saying, hey, I'm this Green Party person. Instead, I've come to them just with our key values, right? And our, and our four pillars. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, do you agree that social justice is a problem in our city that needs to be addressed? Now, do you agree that minorities should have rights? And I just ask those questions. If they will respond yes to me, then I can gauge them in, in our platform and all the rest, right? But when I come to them green-wise, it, it's really off-putting. So I, I, I suspect many of you have those same issues. And, you know, they're, it's disheartening, especially if you're in a state where, like you are, Anita, where mostly it's a Republican hellhole and, you know, there's pockets of sanity. So, you know, if and I... I'm very grateful that I don't live someplace like Florida, where the laws being passed now are so completely, to my mind at least, so beyond the pale and so completely egregious that it's hard for me to even understand how rational people came to those conclusions. And so what I've concluded is, of course, they haven't. They, they had a political agenda and it didn't matter evidence. It doesn't matter logic. It doesn't matter truth. They are going to advance agenda. So... You know, if, if you live in one of those states, I suspect it's really hard to advocate for Green Party stuff, right? Um, and, and it's not necessarily easier here. So I think that it's just that kind of thing where, for me, meeting in meetings with Greens, like-minded folks, is always an energizing thing because, you know, I feel, I don't know how y'all feel, but I often feel like an island of greenness <laughs> in a sea of blue and red. And, and you know, and I can get drowned out. And, and my voice, whatever message I have, which is good, like, you know, the Dems with, did with the Green New Deal, they'll pull it from me, strip it down and make it something different and be like, look, we're championing your idea. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> it's just the same word, but it's not even remotely related to like equal rights or housing justice or, you know, police accountability or any of the things which are important. And, you know, I know that most of us here are minority folks. And if you're a minority person, you understand quite clearly how significant police reform is in our country and how mandatory it has to be. I live in, a, in Seattle, as you know. And so if you saw the World Trade Center protests here in 2000 and what happened, it has not gotten any better. In fact, Seattle's police department has been under a federal decree for 23 years now to, to change. And our police union has said to the federal government, fuck you, and hasn't. They just didn't do it. And so they ignore the federal decree and they keep doing everything they've been prohibited from doing. You know, that is done to me. That's done to my friends when they come here. And that's probably happening in your cities too. We're watching it. And so, you know, if you're a trans person or minority person, I know it's you want to be out there on the front lines, right? And you want to stand up and protest, but you need to be real clear minded about what happens when you get arrested, right? When you get detained, it's not the same. If you, you know, you're not going to be just treated the same as other people. So you have to like have a support network in place. If you're going to go to a protest, have people know where you're going to be, tell people so that if you get picked up, you know, you'll be taken in. One of the tricks I learned here in Washington is find out your local state's uh, lawyer's guild, right? The, the lawyer's guild and write that number with Sharpie on your arm. Because when you get into that jail cell and you need your one phone call, trust me, you want to call the lawyers, not you know your friend uh, who will then just call the lawyers. Call the lawyers directly. They will get there and they will get you out. This has been a thing that has happened for the last four years or three years in our country since the George Floyd protests. So if any of you go to those, you know, pro especially now, too, with all the anti-war stuff going on, there's a likely chance that we'll be detained and all the rest. So be safe, you know, keep the, keep the lawyer's number on your arm, <laughs> Sharpie, so it doesn't get washed off in your sweat and the tear gas and all the rest, right? Um, I guess I would, if I could, if I could say char marching orders or an inspiring thing at the end is, you know, the moral arc of the universe bends ever upward. And though it feels right now like we're losing, we're not going to lose. We will win and we will win because we are right and they are wrong. Bring it over. Thank you. That actually is a wonderful. I love the way you just worded that. Um, mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any closing words? Cynthia, are you trying to say something? No, I'm just thinking on everything. I think I said quite a bit before about people power. 
But I'll also say that people say, you know, how are we going to get this done? Even if your Green Party isn't uh, recognized on the ballot in your state, like I said, get people power. Get people to get on board with the issues, with our stance on the issues, that things need to be made better for people of all genders, and particularly for trans and gender diverse people, and make enough noise that people want to uh, hear about this, do the education, and tell people what's going on, and urge people that even if they're not the ones in office, even if it's not, even if we don't have somebody say on the ballot there, we need to be the agents for change to get p- the issues moved forward so that everybody of every party doesn't get to stop hearing about it so that it does get somewhere. And if if the mainstream parties try to water it down to some corporate bull, then we say, no way. We keep going with the ethical and moral stuff that we feel needs to happen. And we just keep being loud in front on the issues and getting people to understand what the actual, what the facts, what the knowledge, what the actual stories of people's lives are, rather than what's on uh, something like Fox News or MSNBC or whatever. No, we will actually be talking about this stuff and letting people know about it locally, statewide, nationally. That's why I'm here tonight as part of keeping this stuff in people's awareness. Even within the Green Party, even in nearly 2024, yeah, I will not stop talking about this stuff until everything is better completely. And I can sit in a rocking chair and have some young brats paint my nails and ask me, Auntie Cynthia, when were, well, what was it like when things were still stupid? I want to get to that day, and I want us all to work toward that day. Thank you, Cynthia. So if there's not anyone else that wants to speak with any closing remarks, we're going to go ahead and uh, say goodnight. Let us all leave here with an idea and a job to do. Our jobs to do are to bring awareness to the importance of us to make differences and for us to work together to be active. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you. Thanks for organizing. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for organizing this and putting it all together and and doing it all. I appreciate it. Thank you. We very all much. do what we can. Thank you. And it's so good to see you all. Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night, everyone. Cheers. Good night. And good have night. a blessed morning. <laughs>